7.29 a.m. Umbrella in full effect. A lot of rain last night in Memphis. And I'm out early because I have some place to be. To the right is a very famous wall. And past that very famous wall is a very famous house. And yes, even in the rain, the gates are open. And it is now hailing. Look very closely at the ground. That is not snow. Those little nuggets of white, that's hail. That's not good. Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here. For one hour, early in the mornings, on most days, Graceland will open up their gates and allow folks to walk up to the meditation garden to pay their respects to the king. So I have parked next to the wall and I'm gonna make the very short pilgrimage in the rain. It's my second channel, daily vlog channel. It's the Daily Woo. I sound like Elvis, right? There's really not much more room on these rocks to even place your memories and mementos of Elvis. The rain has subsided. But take a look at this over the wall. For nearly half his life, that was his home. And I get to walk up that path. This is the first time in my life I've gone past these gates. Good morning. Okay, thank you. The security guard told me, do not go up to the house. Stay on the trail, but do not go up to the house. I think it's fantastic that they allow people to do this and do not charge an admission fee for those who just want to stop by and say hi to the man himself. On the other side of that little pond is where he is laid to rest. And even in the rain, even in the stormy weather, People are out paying their respects. Next to him is his grandmother, Minnie Mae. And to the right of him is his father, Vernon. And next to Vernon is his mom, Gladys. And over there on the very far end is a headstone memorial to his twin brother who died at birth. He is not buried here. He's buried in Tupelo, but they were not able to move the little boy's body so they have just placed headstone as a memorial the passing of jesse always plagued him through life he always wondered why god would take his brother but not him and the early death of his mom also was a major blow to elvis some even say he was never the same afterwards and eventually was partly cause for his untimely death. It's amazing to think that his body now lays to rest here at Graceland, a place he loved. He could have lived anywhere in the world, but he chose Memphis, Tennessee. Of all places, this is where his heart was. This is where his memories were. And this is where he wanted to be. This statue bearing the family name engraved at the bottom has an interesting backstory because Elvis and his mother were not originally placed here after death. And neither was this. On August 16th, 1977, on the second floor, directly in the middle, pretty much behind those pillars to the back. Right about here was where his body was found. In fact, his bedroom was up here. Once the news got out, it did not take long for people to start showing up 
first by the dozens, then by the hundreds, and then by the thousands at the gates. Two days later, the funeral was held on property and the crowd grew even larger. People wanted to get one last view and say their goodbyes. As the hearse with his casket turned onto the road into the throngs of adorning fans, it made its way down Elvis Presley Boulevard. And there's a very famous photo of a woman leaving the sidewalk and running up towards the car. A lot of tears that day, a lot of emotions running through Memphis and the world. It might just be me, but I think it's, I think it's pretty cool that Large Marge is the only one parked in front of the property right now. Whoa, it's starting to rain again. Not only do I really like the guy, but I have another connection. I was born in Tupelo, Mississippi, just like he was. This is the exact route that the funeral procession took, about three and a half miles up to Forest Hill Cemetery, where he was originally laid to rest. Straight ahead is the mausoleum. Wow, just seeing it in person pretty incredible. I've seen this in videos and photos over the years. But to be here, to be here in person, pretty amazing. The entire property was so engulfed in flowers, you couldn't see any grass or concrete or anything in front of the structure. And it was said you couldn't even find a florist anywhere in the vicinity that had any flowers remaining because people purchased all of them. A few photos were taken that day, including one from this angle. This headstone was here in 1977, matching up the shot where the hearse parked just to the left of it. The pallbearers walking up those very four steps. And one thing I was not expecting before getting here was the fact that the door seems to be open. I don't know if this is normally left open in this fashion. But I'm gonna go in. It's a very interesting feeling to be standing inside here straight ahead was the vault Elvis was placed originally and where other family members were to be buried later. Grave robbers changed all that because shortly after he was laid to rest in this room. Someone tried stealing the body. This prompted the movement of himself and his mother to Graceland. The walls are slightly misted with rain or condensation giving it a little bit more ambiance. That's where he was. King of rock and roll. On the same property, just a little ways away, is where his mother Gladys was originally laid to rest. She died at the age of 46, way too young, and Elvis 
at such a difficult time with the passing of his mom. This concrete slab that you see here in the grass was the location of what has now been moved to Graceland, the big tall cross that is now in the meditation garden, used to sit right there. And her grave was a few feet in front of it, right here. You'll also notice there are some remnants here of the monument itself that stayed adhered to the concrete. And you'll also see people have chipped off portions of where it once stood as a little memento. You see this pretty often at a lot of celebrity and famous people, their grave sites, people will somehow chip off part of it to take home with them. And as I stand here, all I can think of is that photo of Elvis kneeling down, saddened, disheartened at the passing of his mother in this very spot, not even thinking or considering at that moment that he would one day be laid to rest just across the way in the mausoleum. With a pretty decent view of downtown Memphis is where Elvis lived the longest in this town, next to Graceland. In fact, his family moved into these apartments for three or four years when he was a teenager. These were the formidable years and where he really came into his own as a musician. He could be seen roaming all around this property, playing guitar, performing, and honing his craft. The gates are closing behind me, and this gentleman in the vehicle up there, he's a security guard, he let me in. Yeah, that's a picture of him there as a boy in front of the building. Yeah. It used to be called Lauderdale Courts from October 1949 to January 1953. Former residents remember foremost that Elvis liked to sing and play guitar. He practiced in the basement and performed for neighbors on the front steps of his building. I thought it was going to be a little bit easier and more accessible to get up to the actual apartment. That was not the case, but either way, pretty cool to to walk the grounds. And literally a stone's throw, only maybe a couple hundred yards from that first apartment, was a place called Poplar Tunes, which was his favorite vinyl record store and has the significance of being the first place that made his music available to the general public. It's even stated on this placard, his first record was purchased here. I had this great idea about purchasing one of Elvis's albums on CD, obviously, for the RV inside the place where it was originally first sold on vinyl. Unfortunately, a few years ago, it went out of business. It looks like they're converting it into some sort of diner establishment, which that also is not open. And just to show how close it was, where he lived was right there. Hume's Preparatory Academy became a middle school, but before that it was a high school. In 1953, a certain person graduated from there. I'm kind of wondering if that's a relic of the old high school sign before they converted it to the younger age groups. No, probably not because it's still intact and still spells out high school on the front of the building from this angle. It says here that he won the senior class talent show and his slick backed hair and the usual style of dress were tolerated by the principal at that time and the legend began as i drive through the neighborhood here i'm not really sure why but someone's legs are in that trash can what happened here look at that old theater there 
of Lamar. That's awesome. Just after high school, he started recording albums. His popularity happened very quickly. And with the first substantial bit of money he had, he bought a house here on Audubon Drive, the precursor to Graceland, before there was a Graceland. That came a couple years later. And there it is, a humble little abode. It's interesting that the neighbors next door have something similar to what Graceland looks like. So if you were an early fan of his, you could have easily just parked where my RV is parked, stood outside to this gate and waited for him to walk out and say what's up. Now it wouldn't be too terribly difficult to step over this fence, but do not attempt to go in it from this angle because look at all that barbed wire. Do not, do not cross that fence line. It's very interesting to me that Elvis died at the age of 42. That's my age. I am currently 42. Puts things in perspective a bit. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Vlog over. Well, since my baby left me, I found a new place to dwell. It's down at the end of a lonely street called a Heartbreak Hotel. And I feel so lonely. I feel so lonely. Oh, oh wow, it's recording? Oh, crap. <laughs>